Hey everyone, Guillermo Torres. Um, so I, I live in California and as he said, I lead the directions team in Google Maps, so getting you from point A to point B. Um, so one of the things that, that is also good to notice is that I also work at Google, which is a very empirical company. It's very engineering led. Um, so it's, it's very important to, to know this when it comes to implementing features that are de delightful or sort of the, the kind of features like uh, this, for instance, we are um, April Fool's jokes that we do every year, trying to implement that. Like in this case, last year we did the uh, Pac-Man uh, joke, which you can turn any map into a Pac-Man uh, court. But there's also small details, like if you are planning to walk from a walk that is very long, we turn the little guy into a hiking uh, uh, guy. Uh, so little details like that, those are things that, that, um, that are, is what we define as delightful. And what I wanted to talk to you about is how to get those implemented. Um, so the first thing to get implemented is to actually define it and to get it into the company, company jargon. So like what is actually delight? And the way that we are defining it is actually something that, that reminds me a lot um, is, uh, about it is this quote by Maggie Angelou, uh, which is, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how, how you made them feel. And I think that's the same thing with the uh, apps and with experiences that you have with technology. Um, so this is how we did, uh, define delight. It's an unexpected positive experience crafted to, to exceed audience expectations. Um, so a few key things here is that uh, first, the unexpected is a, is, a, is a big one, and we'll talk about, about that, but it's something that delightful uh, will get less delightful over time. Um, and positive experience is something that is very relevant, relevant for uh, a product. Um, and then the other one is uh, crafted to exceed audience expectations. And this is a big one in terms of getting implemented since a lot of the times when we're making products, we're always going for the MVP, for the minimum viable product. And this is actually contradictory to what we want out of Delight, which is kind of like go above and beyond to exceed those expectations. Um, so how do we go about implementing it? So the biggest, uh, the biggest problem is the roadmap, the, ro the, the product roadmap that we have. Uh, most of the time you, you, will, you will have you have a limited amount of resources, a limited amount of engineering hours or design hours, and those will be, uh, those will be pri prioritized with the product roadmap. So when you ask, uh, uh, say, the product manager or whoever is leading the, the, the product to, to have this life of feature versus something that, 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 is, is, that is, is showing that it gets money, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be hard to, to get it through. It's going to be hard to get the resource to need to have it. Um, so what are, what are different ways in which we can actually uh, get this into the roadmap is by actually showing the numbers about sort of like finding ways in which you can quantify that experience. Um, so a big, um, a big resource for that is um, this person, Noriako Kano. Uh, he made the Kano model back in the 80s. Does anyone know uh, about his experience, the Kano model? Great. Um, so uh, for those of you who don't know, so the Kano, uh, Kano model, so he, is, he, he was a practitioner from the 80s and 90s. In, in Japan, so picture Sony, TVs, electronics, and that sort of stuff. So what he started doing was finding a, a, a way to quantify um, uh, the, the, um, how much a, a, a user liked a feature into, in, into the products. Um, so there's a, a graph from the Kano model. And as you can see, there's, there's four patterns. Let me go through a little bit about how the, the graph kind of works. So these are the, on the x-axis, you have the features that are getting implemented, so from not implemented to fully implemented. And then on the y-axis, you have the user satisfaction uh, with a feature. Uh, so starting with mandatory, if you think about, thinking about TVs, mandatory uh, uh, features would be sort of like changing the channel, uh, being able to see the picture, color maybe. Then performer type of features is the quality of the image, how, much, how many colors you get, uh, how, how, um, uh, how well is the reception, those sort of, uh, those sort of features that, that are already there, but it's basically how well they perform, and people are already aware of them. And then delighters are kind of like the more newer features that people don't, are, not, are, are not aware of it as much, but then they, those drive 
the people to buy a new product. For instance, the, the um, Apple just released the, the touch bar on the Mac. That's a perfect example of a delighter that people will buy it because it's something that, that, it's, that they, they didn't have it. Uh, back in the 80s, or well, actually uh, before that, the, con the remote control was a delighter. Uh, but one of the key things about this model is that over time, um, that changes down to mandatory. So before, a remote control for a TV was a delightful feature, was a, de a delighter, it, would dro it drove um, sales, uh, but eventually it made it to mandatory, where now you can't really buy a TV without a, without a remote control. So uh, a, good, um, a good case in which uh, how we kind of went about implementing some of the delightful features is um, we, we kind of ran a, we normally ran design sprints every quarter. And one of the, 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 the design sprints that we ran was uh, a, a run that was going around delight. Uh, so our process for it was um, we basically defined sort of like what were our pillars for, for delight. Then we had some, uh, uh, some improvisation exercises to like get sort of like the brainstorming and get the, our creative juices flowing. And then we had a lot of discussions around brand, what our brand was and what sort of like, what's our base, how we're basically talking to users. Uh, and then through ideation, we came up with a series of ideas. And it was basically, I think we ended up with like 45 type of ideas with mocks and everything. And then from, from that, we took into a, a Kano Eval. So basically, how we evaluated that was, um, oh, I, w I forgot about to talk about uh, pillars. So the pillars that we, that we were running into for, um, for Delight was that we wanted, to, we wanted to go above and beyond. We wanted to make sure that it was noticeable and complete. So one of the things that we were really good at was were Easter eggs. And the problem with Easter eggs is that the impact that you get out of them is not as big. So we wanted Delightful features to be noticeable and complete. Uh, we also wanted them to remove complexity. When you're doing some artifact or something that adds on top of the experience, one of the things that you, that, that you can end up uh, having to do is harming the experience because it adds more complexity. Um, also, it, it, that re reinforces our fundamental values, that there's the values of the product and the values of the company, um, and also that it ev evokes uh, positive reactions. So um, once we had the, the, all these ideas, we kind of uh, did, a, did a series of service in which we asked uh, users how they would feel about a feature if in their absence and in their presence. So what this left us with, and this is also from the Kano model, uh, is basically this rubric where it, you, you, have, uh, you ask people how they feel about the, the absence, and they basically say like, expect, neutral, tolerate, and dislike. And then on the, um, how they feel about the presence, you kind of ask them that like, expect, neutral, tolerate, and dislike in the same way. So you end up uh, with, with some, um, some features that are on the mandatory side, which is kind of like the TV and the, the, the people that, that actually they expect them on, they may, may, may like it or may not like it, but they expect it at the product. But also you end up with also some features that are sort of like the exciter, uh, which are sort of like expected and people are like, and those are the ones that you kind of want to get um, more into it. But also on the other side, we also found, found some, some uh, features that were sort of on the reverse side that people didn't like them, and they were like, please do not implement this. We, we don't want this on, our, on the product. Um, so we ended up with something like this after the survey in which, uh, as you can see, there were some features that people didn't like them at all, and, and, and we, we stayed away from them. But then we had some data showing that, that, uh, that there were quite a few features that people really wanted them into the feature. And uh, keep in mind that none of these uh, ideas were actually um, uh, part of the, the, the product roadmap. Those, these were all sort of like above and beyond type of ideas. Sort of like imagine like the, the little walking guy or like a little bit bigger than that, but ideas like that. Um, so after all the ideation, we started seeing that uh, some themes in terms of the type of delight ideas. Uh, and I'll talk about some, with some examples after this. But uh, these are kind of like the, the original themes that we were end to, ended up with. So the first one is pure delight. Um, so this is basically just a beautiful artifact. Something just makes the product a little bit more beautiful and a little bit more engaging. Um, humanizing is a big one. So uh, for products that are, that are technology, having Having any way in which you can humanize the product is something that, that will add delight. Flow is a big one, so removing the obstacles, making the, the experience more effective. 
uh, inspirational features that help uh, people discover and feel better about the product and about themselves. Um, customization, having any way in which you can personalize and let the, the user invest in the product is a way of, of, of getting some delight out of it. And then the other one, is, uh, which is a bit tricky, is we're calling it frown up, upside down moments, which is basically no matter what, no matter what you build, there's always going to be some errors. There's always going to be some experiences that are negative when they're using the product. So what I wanted to, to do is take those negative experiences and seeing how we can turn it into a positive experience. Um, something to, to keep in mind also is that Dana uh, Chisnell, who also has been uh, doing some work on Delight, she basically has these three themes. She, has, she basically says that it's just pure pleasure, then there's the flow side, and then there's the, the, the purpose side. And then that, the, the more, on the, more towards purpose, the more user satisfaction you would get. So let's go through some examples of, of those themes. Uh, so pure delight and inspiration. Uh, the Google Doodle is, is, is a great example of this. This basically is a way to, in which you can engage the audience in something that can get them inspired. Uh, it can be as targeted as, for instance, I, I don't really know who Irena is, uh, but I bet a bunch of people here would, would know who, uh, who she is. And that it speaks to like, you know, someone, uh, the remoteness of, of a company in one side, of the con uh, one side of the world speaking to someone in the other side of the world. Um, and other stuff like inspiring people to vote and same with um, also, it, also um, making sure that the values of a company are still there when Google celebrated the, the, um, the Olympics in, in, in Russia with the rainbow flag. Um, so the other one is uh, about beautiful artifact. It's sort of like what the Yelp is doing here where, when you scroll down, you can keep scrolling down. And it's something that it's, that it's not useful. It's barely visible. It's not there. And it just adds it. Like the, the, then you start getting into some, some questions. And it's more about like here the experience doesn't really is not doesn't get more cumbersome. It's more about like how much how much it increases the files the file size of the app. Uh, is this in, is this going to be a for performance issue or whatever? But it's more an engineering question. Calendar actually is another one that, that has a pretty good job in, in terms of beautiful artifact. Uh, they mine your uh, data in terms of what you have on your calendar. So if you have a flight to New York they put a, a picture of New York. Uh, if you have dr uh, drinks with a friend, they have an illustration of a drink. Uh, of drinks. So there's, these are different ways in which they can um, make the, the experience a little bit more delightful, a little bit more beautiful, but don't, it doesn't really uh, affect your experience in other way than making it more, more pretty. Uh, front upside down. Uh, so 404 is an, a perfect example of, of, of an experience where it, that is trying to take that uh, negative experience into something positive. There's, so many websites that have created uh, 404 experiences. Um, but also in some apps, like for instance, for, for, for us, um, when, we can't really give you directions when you ask for, from, to go from Warsaw to New York. So one of the things that we try to do is like, have some illustration that is kind of uh, interesting in some way. So like finding ways in which you can make a, go a little bit further. Um, other ways is actually also to prevent you from making a mistake. Uh, so for instance, uh, um, Pinterest, when you're adding, when you're pinning something that's already a, a, to your board, they actually warn you about it. And same with Spotify. Once you add a, a song to your playlist that you've already added, then they, they warn you about it so you don't make the mistake. Humanizing is another, uh, another of the themes that I was discussing. And uh, I, like, I like how Flickr, uh, when, whenever you log in, they greet you in some other, in some new language, uh, like in this case, Dutch, Swahili, and, and, and English. Um, so I kind of like the, the, that, that sort of way of, of, uh, of addressing the, the way in, to, in terms of humanizing. Um, but uh, the, the guys at MailChimp have this resource uh, called Voice and Tone, which is kind of like their, their voice guidelines, uh, which I would, I would su suggest you use it. They, they are great about getting, getting any sort of um, messaging at a, around a user action and making it human in some way. Uh, another example of this is basically on Sansa when when uh, when you uh, when you're when they ask you to buy a, 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 um, a song and you say no thanks they have this little animation to, trying to give you a little bit of a guilt trip um, guilt trips as it turns out is a little bit of a, of, of like is it po a positive experience is it not but uh, but it can be a positive experience sort of like when when you're canceling your subscription in Spotify they actually give you a 
um, a playlist, a goodbye playlist with songs like, like Can We Still Be Friends? And trying to like still keep a positive experience even though you're saying goodbye. Personalization is another big one. And personalization can, can be more than just like entering my name and something else. But uh, something that Yelp does that is, that is pretty nice is that in cities like New York where the, the city is gridded, instead of, uh, instead of saying miles and distance, they start showing blocks. Uh, that doesn't normally happen in other cities where it doesn't really go with, uh, on, on blocks. Um, flow is, is the, other, the other side of like making sure that the experience is, is as, as smooth as possible. Um, so Airbnb has this, this um, nice feature that's hard to find, but if you're, if you're sending messages to several hosts trying to find a place, they pre-fill the message that you have with a previous one you did, and they replace the names to the host. Uh, so that way you don't have to like retype and copy and paste all the time. Uh, so that's a great feature of like flow that it's not really gonna make itself into any, any product roadmap. Another one is uh, uh, OSX has some, some, some great, great ones in terms of like the, the way that the, the date adapts to the size of the column. It's something that, that's instead of like truncating it and uh, just adapting the, the format of the, the, the date is great. Or whenever you lose your, your cursor, this one that was new from Yosemite, you just shake your mouse and it, it, it gets bigger so you can find your cursor. Purpose is, um, is the other one. This, this is uh, the one that we had discussed before, but purpose is a little bit about sort of like kind of finding that sense of purpose on, on users in terms of the experience. And Airbnb does this great thing in, on, the, on the homepage in which they should have showcased those mundane interactions that you have with hosts. Uh, instead of having, you know, those like, instead of focusing on the tourist experience and showing, uh, I don't know, the Eiffel Tower or sort of like the, the sort of the big aha moments, they focus on the mundane interactions with hosts. And that sort of like gets you into a sense sort of purpose of, of getting into the community for Airbnb. Um, then you start getting into not as much design, but also in terms of PR. So for instance, Zipcar um, uh, had this, this, this thing going that every Thanksgiving, they, they allow um, users to get free, free drives if they take Thanksgiving meals to, uh, to people in need. Um, so this, this one was very positive, but um, when gay marriage became a, the law in San Francisco, um, Uber had this, had this promo in which they, it was basically a quick marriage, they call it wedding on demand, and basically they would pick you up, they would take you to a place where, it would, where you can get married really quick, and then they would drive you back home. Um, and this didn't really, really bode well with, uh, in terms of PR because it kind of cheapened the, the, what marriage is about. Um, so the other thing that I wanted to talk about is about building trust. Um, so building trust is kind of hard and kind of also get, gets, um, gets into like how do you get into the product roadmap and how do you get, it, get users to really engage with you. Um, so I do believe that design is a tool that can be used for, for building trust and this was kind of um, one of the things that, that I've been reading is, is this, there's a study, on, on, um, a study from Stanford in which they were trying to see what makes a site more trustworthy and, and less trustworthy and they found that uh, about 54 uh, of, of, their, of the, the people that, that, that they were studying, um, they looked as, as, at aesthetics uh, for signs of trustworthiness. Uh, so is, does the site have a good layout? What about the logo? What about the colors? They look at that for, to see the, the, the signs of, of trustworthiness. Um, luckily, a lot of the scammers and all that don't have, really good, don't have big budgets for, for good designers, so this is what you end up with. Um, the other one is uh, social proof, being able to use social proof for, engage, for using trust. Um, so for instance, this, this is a pretty famous ex uh, experiment that uh, the guys at, at uh, Basecamp did, uh, which is basically they, they changed their homepage uh, from showcasing features to showcasing the users and having the users' um, um, uh, testimonials. And they found that the conversion rate went up by uh, 102%. Um, another, one, another big way of, of building trust, and in, in this case building re retention, is to follow the hook model. This is, this is something that, that uh, Nir Eyal has been um, uh, advocating for a long while. Uh, but in this case, how many, how many do, don't know the hook model or not familiar with the hook model? 
OK, perfect. Uh, I'll go through a little bit. So in, the, in terms of the hook model, this is a, a model that is basically used for engagement and, and growth of a service. Um, and we start with uh, a trigger, so basically having a good trigger to get you into the app. So let's say a notification is a great example. Um, then a quick action, so making sure that, that whatever trigger you have is easily, uh, easily followed up by an, uh, by an action. So that action needs to get into get in some really quick way into what the product should be. Or and the experience should give you a variable reward. Uh, this, this, uh, and then um, this actually is something that, that um, the variable reward is something that Facebook is really great at. That whenever you have a notification, whenever you have a trigger, they say like, oh, I wonder what my friend or something is doing. And you go into Facebook, the newsfeed is always different. It always has to be different. And that variable reward is what keeps you coming several times a day. Um, and then the final one is investment. And the investment is to get, really get you into uh, uh, not just investing time on it, but making sure that the app, uh, that, you've, uh, th that what you've invested in the app makes, uh, uh, prevents you from going to another app. This is why Facebook focused, um, uh, when they were growing, the, 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 most of their focus was into getting you to grow over 100 friends, I think it was. Like, uh, they had a, a specific, um, uh, amount of friends in which like, they said like, uh, uh, whenever someone has more than 100 friends, that means that they're into the, uh, into the app and, and they're engaged. Uh, so, in, so getting the goal in terms of like, what investment is, is something that would be very important. So for instance, for, for Google Maps, investment means make, getting you to, let, to share, uh, to, to make sure that, that your location is on your phone. Uh, Google Maps doesn't really work on, uh, on if your location doesn't, is, not, is not on. And a lot of people in, in tons of countries don't, don't really trust their location. Uh, and say another, way, another, another investment thing would, would be sort of like home and work, making sure that, that people in, input their, their home and work. That way, that, that way we can tell you about sort of commute times and getting you engaged about sort of how to get home really quickly and sort of like those quick actions. So it's kind of the, the hook model. And uh, the main way in which you can uh, do triggers is through notifications. And the problem with notifications is that because people are seeing how effective it is, it's, tr it's starting to derode the trust that, 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 um, that users have in our products. Um, you get, there's some, some, some notifications like this one, for instance, in Duolingo, you get, there's an, an app for, for learning languages. Uh, but you get every day, you get a, a, a reminder saying, hey, you, you, wanna, you, you should practice your, your, uh, your language, you should start um, getting into. But uh, a way to build trust, like this, in this case, like, okay, you're noisy, please go away. I don't really, I just tried it once. Um, but a way in which they can regain that trust is uh, they send you at, at some point saying, these reminders don't seem to be working, uh, we'll stop sending them for now. Uh, so that's a way of saying, okay, this, this app kind of like the, the no things that the notifications should be useful, and they're not just sending me noise. Uh, Foursquare is another one that, that, that builds rotation in a smart way. Uh, and, and instead of telling you like, hey, you're here, you should check this out, they use social proof, they use the social network to say, say saying, hey, are you here? This person, or in most, some of the times, or most of the times, is someone that, that, is, uh, that is within your social network. Uh, and it tells you sort of like what's the quick tip. Uh, but then you have problems like Tumblr. Uh, actually, you got this one. It says Tumblr, oh yeah, like what? Why? I have no idea. I, I really do. I don't know uh, anyone at Tumblr, so I don't know why I got that, that notification. Um, uh, but uh, same with like getting you a notification for every single thing, every single piece of content you have, even though it's not relevant to you. Uh, it just makes people trust you less. Um, so those are different things that uh, you, you can get engaged on on user delight and trust. Um, but yeah, any questions you would have? Yeah.